With the way that Blender is set up by default, if you're rendering a project and it crashes or if you decide you want to stop it and pick it back up later, you just can't. Because if you stop the render and you have it output as a video file, the file is probably going to like corrupt and then you can't do anything with it. You just have to start the whole thing over. So I'm going to show you a quick little easy tip to show you how you can not only stop your renders without it corrupting the files, but also pick back up where you left off so you're not wasting a bunch of time. Over here in Blender, we've got a pretty big scene, but honestly, you should be doing this for any scene because it doesn't matter how big or small it is, it could still crash. There's always the risk. So we'll come over here to Output Properties on the right side, and under Output, the file format is set to FMPEG Video, and what we're going to want to do is change this to PNG or JPEG, whichever you prefer. What this will do is instead of outputting one video file, it's going to, for each frame, there will be an individual image that's going to be outputted. So because of that, whenever you select your output, what you're going to want to make sure that you do is you select, you create an entire folder dedicated to just, just this one output. So you're going to accept that folder. Now, if you get into the situation where Blender has crashed like this, we have these individual images. We can just go and see which one was the last image rendered, 775. We'll just reopen that project file, and then we will set our start frame to whatever the last frame was rendered, plus one. So if it stopped at 775, you'll want to start your next render at 776. And anytime it might crash like that, you just do the same process until the whole thing's rendered, or you can use that for if you just want to pause the render, work on something else, turn your computer off. I don't care what you do, but it's just a good process. So that way, by the end of it, you have this entire image sequence for your whole render, and you're not losing any progress each time it crashes or you decide to close things out. But you know, obviously, you're going to want to view your render in a way other than just using the arrow keys to go to each image to play it back. So what you're going to do now is you're just going to reopen Blender and you're going to go to video editing. You're going to add your image sequence. So we're just going to locate that image sequence or we'll just get a random one just so we can have it. This one was a test so it's a little bit buggy. What we're going to want to do is we'll see right here at the, at the top of this image strip around the middle, it says 734. That's the total amount of frames in this. So since we're already starting at one frame, we will end it at 734. And then we'll see that our timeline perfectly matches this. It might not play back super smooth, but that's because this clip is 4K. What we'll do now is I'm just going to go to my base blender thing and we'll just call this There, that seems like a pretty good title for this test. So we're gonna accept that. We'll make sure that our encoding is set to MPEG-4, just because I like that one better, so I want you to use that one. Because this is just a straight video file, we can render an EV no matter what it is. We can set our render quality down to one. So that way, when we press render, it's just gonna render this all the way through. So that way, when we start our render, it's just gonna render everything pretty quickly. You don't have to worry about samples or anything like that, as far as I know. And once it's all finished, which shouldn't take too long, you will have your final render. 